Tonight on Geeking Out, man, we're going to talk to one of the comic book legends, co-publisher of DC Comics, Jim Lee. He's going to show us artwork from Suicide Squad and Rebirth. Uh, this is what I was working on late last night. How uh, much? Yeah, exactly. And plus, we got the two guys, the geniuses, the brilliant minds behind one of my favorite movies, Deadpool, Brent Reese, and Paul Wernick. We were going to have Ryan in a baby chick suit, squatting over Vanessa's chest and dropping chocolate eggs under her chest. No! Plus, field correspondent Tiffany Smith is going to take us out for a bloody good time at Body Prop Warehouse, Dapper Cadaver. I should expect that there's just going to be random bodies hanging out everywhere. She's actually, she's rigged up so that you can hang her. It's so horrific. That and so much more on this episode of What? Gig it I'm Kevin Smith. This man. is Geeking Out, and on this episode, we've got a lot of really great stuff. Uh, two guys are stopping by, Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, who are responsible now for the most successful R-rated movie of all time. Deadpool, that's right, man. The guys that wrote Deadpool, they're going to sit here and talk to us over at the chopping block. But we do live in a world now where an R-rated movie like a Deadpool can go absolutely through the roof. So when we were kids, there were R-rated films that we kind of snuck into. What was that film for you? you it's a film that you shouldn't have seen, but you did. I didn't have to sneak in. My old man would take me to R-rated movies that he figured I could handle. But I remember I did get in trouble one time for bringing home an R-rated movie. I went to the video store for the first time when they opened the video store in our neck of the woods. And so I was there with my friend Mike and I said, we want the worst horror movie that you have. And the guy was like, okay. And he gave me a horror movie called Blood Sucking Freaks. So now, Blood Sucking Freaks, if you've never seen it, it's, it's beyond horror. It's kind of one of the most nasty exploitation films you'll ever see in your life. But as I was watching the flick, like we're watching in the living room, and my mom is in the kitchen, and the line rings out loud throughout the entire house. The guy, the villain in the piece says, this mouth will make an interesting urinal. And my mother goes, what? And comes out of the room, she's like, turn that off! And I got punished for a week, man. So, so for me, my parents let me watch this stuff. I, you know, I bet the difference for me is I'd be sitting in the theater watching with my parents. Right. And that's an awkward moment. It's that bachelor party moment where it's like, why are we all huddled around watching these two people do what they're doing? No doubt. It's weird when you're sitting with your parents and, you know, somebody takes off their top. You don't ever want to watch an R-rated movie with your parents. No. The moment people start being like, taking tops off or, like, falling out of frame low and stuff, right. suddenly you're both like, <laughs> remember when you were young? Let's think about that. Yeah. Everyone's got their top five films, right? At my age, it's really almost next to impossible to acquire a new film to put into that category. But Deadpool is in that category. I'm so excited to be talking to you guys. Red Reese and Paul Wernick. Come on, guys! Thank you. Thank you. Seriously. For me, for me, and you can talk about how much you hate the movie, but for me, <laughs> I got issues. We'll talk about it. Seriously, Deadpool pushes all the right buttons. I watch it with my kids. Uh, I'm about to call Child Protective Services. If you're watching it with your kids, we might need to interview. That's a question. Five, right? That's very question. Five, eight, and thirteen. <laughs> yeah, you're good. You're good. Were you on set? We were every day. On a show? every day. Every day. And that, for those that don't know, like that's rare. Like they don't let the writers necessarily always go. Interestingly, Ryan wanted us there. We were on the project for six years. It was really a core creative team of us, Ryan. Uh, and the director, Tim Miller. Fox, interestingly, wouldn't pay for us to be on set. Ryan Reynolds paid out of his own money, out of his own pocket. Stop it, really? Wow. Yeah. You just shot his stock package. through the yeah. ceiling, man. Yeah. I'm like, that's Canadian. Oh, yeah. the best. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Looking out yeah. for the writers like, oh, they're on my dime. But it was a smart call. It's not even altruistic. That's a smart call because you guys can sit there and be like, uh, hashtag drive by, say that. And he's like, yeah, oh, yeah. good. And go and yeah. right in a line and move forward from there. Yeah. He's wearing a mask. Right, so where a lot of those lines done in post made funnier and funnier and funnier and also yes. voiceover you have voiceover yes movie. which became our curse you know you think you're done writing the movie then you think you're done shooting the movie and next thing you know it's nine months later and you're still writing lines one of my favorite parts of Deadpool is the holiday sex scene mm. you know the montage of, of, of well, sex I know it's it's sitting, well, we know well, sitting next to my daughter and was like <laughs> 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 I had to cover my son's eyes during that scene <laughs> Jonah Peck is that true? yeah that's so that's why I open my kids eyes for the pegging <laughs> that's how you treat a man <laughs> <laughs> international women <laughs> were, there, were there other uh, moments that you cut out of the movie? We did have some other ones. We had, I think the one that was, that I most wanted that didn't make it in was Easter. We were going to have Ryan in a baby chick suit, squatting over Vanessa's chest and dropping chocolate eggs under her chest. No! That was, what was it? I swear. There's the sequel. That goes in the sequel. Yeah, that's what we pitched. That's fantastic. That is awesome. Who, how did you pitch that and that was not Exactly that. Right. Well, one of the things about Deadpool is that everybody was pushing everybody to go further. And so it, it, was, a, it was a receptive audience. But ultimately, I think discretion was the better part of that one. Yeah. Not for the sequel, boys. <laughs> not for the yeah, sequel. Yeah. Are you working on the second? What's going we on? Are. We're planning on shooting uh, 
beginning of the year. We're, we're hip deep or neck deep or something deep. Deep, deep. anyway. It's, deep. it's simple. So let's say deep. Yeah. Deep. Yeah. Yeah. Deep. your balls deep. Your balls deep and into the sea. Yeah. Uh, we are going to commercial. When we come back, we got more with Paul and Rhett. Stay right there. Round it up. You guys work on Zombie Land too. That is uh, breaking news, uh, and every, all the cast is pretty excited. Yeah. Everyone except Bill Murray. Never yeah. Yeah. And later on, so much detail. I, I'm not gonna lie. Every time I get this close to them, I turn around and kind of me out. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. You guys work on Zombie Land 2? We are. That is uh, breaking news that we are we are on Zombie Land 2 right, right. now. And we're sitting with Woody tomorrow and uh, and gonna sort of walk him through some of the stuff we want to do and uh, and every, all the cast is pretty excited. Everyone and, except Bill Murray. Never yeah. 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 Unfortunately, you can only do that turn down. Although it is Zombie Land. Good point. How did that happen? Because that was one of the best surprises of the Zombie Land. Once you got to that scene, you were like instant classic. Like I want to hang out he, with these he, guys. He really did make the movie. Uh, we originally wrote that part for Patrick Swayze. Uh, Space dog, uh, really? And Patrick uh, got sick. We offered it to probably 12 other actors. Yep. And every time we did, we rewrote the script to make jokes specific to that actor. Uh, so Sylvester Stallone, Kevin Bacon, Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill! John claude Van Damme. Oh, all said no. Everyone said John, no. John claude Van Damme passed, and, and as subsequently we heard through the grapevine, said it was the biggest mistake of his career. <laughs> <laughs> He's made some big mistakes in his career. <laughs> That's saying something. <laughs> right, right, right. We were two days away from shooting the scene. We had written an alternate scene with no celebrity where they just fought a bunch of zombies in this mansion. Right. And Paul, to his great credit, doesn't like to take no for an answer. He walked up to Woody Harrelson on the set and said, Woody, anyone else? Do you have any other ideas? Look he at said two guys. Yes. He said Woody Dustin Hoffman oh. and Bill Murray. And we were like, yes. And yes. Who's embarrassment of riches? That was, right? So, but Dustin Hoffman couldn't do it. And but Bill Murray said, "Send me the script." But wait, how, so how does one get in touch with with well, Bill? Okay, Murray? he doesn't have an email address. Interestingly, no agent, no, no manager. manager. It was Woody Harrelson who called him, his buddy, Kingpin. Oh, great! Yeah, that's the connectivity. I never realized until right oh, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was the one that they was like, buddies. "So he gives us a FedEx Kinko's email address to email the script." This and, and these guys print up the script for him. They're the most powerful men in Hollywood because the, the 13 year old guy at the counter at Kinko's is like, "I read this one. I think you should do this one." Or it's past, Bill. This is past. So he got the script and he read it. He said, I, and he told Woody, I love the script, but there's not enough for me to do. In the original draft, he was actually already a zombie. It came back to us and we were like, what about if he's alive? And then what about, and then we were all brainstorming. It's like, and then we kill him. You know, it's like, so 36 hours later, he's on the set. Although we weren't sure he was going to show up. Remember, yeah, because he's famous for, for not, you know, for committing and then right. the FedEx was delivering him. So you knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Chance. He got was, was the key. Sony exactly. was like, send a jet. You could get the Woody on the jet. Get yeah. him out. Get him out. Make sure he shows yeah. up. Um, you guys in Counter Deadpool fans in weird places. Actually, yeah, we had kind of probably the weirdest version of that. Uh, I Paul and I go to the same doctor. Not yeah. at the same time. We do everything. Yeah, yeah. You bend over and I'll cough. Then you bend over and I'll cough. <laughs> so we're, I'm at the doctor's office, and he learns for the first time that uh, I was one of the writers of Deadpool, and he proceeds to gush. He said, "I've seen it for. I love. I love it. I, every line. I mean, it's so fun." And as he's doing that, he's pulling on his glove. Right. Oh, <laughs> I love it a lot. <laughs> I love it a lot. I love it a lot. <laughs> And he proceeds to give me my prostate exam while gushing about the movie. And, I said, and as I was lying there, I'm just thinking, I just never thought that it was going to be like this. You know, I thought, I, 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 You're I, like, I, when I said I wanted to get my balls tickled yeah, yeah. for my work, this wasn't this it. not it. Anyway, so a week uh, and a half later. Yeah, I was just there two days ago. And again, Glove comes on. He talks, starts talking Deadpool. He sticks his finger in my ass. And as he's doing it, I whisper, maximum effort. <laughs> <laughs> and a true fan, he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Take the horns, not now! Let's give it up. Thank you. Ready? <laughs> Coming up, Jim Lee, the co-publisher of DC Comics. Uh, this is what I was working on late last night. It's just a page of Suicide Squad in progress. You're going to make me cry. And later on, we are here at Dapper Cadaver, one of the creepiest and coolest places in Hollywood. How you doing? <laughs> oh, I was shaking. Oh, well, I'm sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I think Deadpool is the first R-rated Stanley cameo since 1995. Yeah, we, uh, we had the idea of putting him in the movie, and we thought, what's the last place you find Stanley? And we thought, strip club. Turns out, I think it's the first place you find Stanley. <laughs> he was very familiar yeah, with the, very he knew the area. He was like Excelsior. <laughs> Our director, Tim, uh, wanted his one line in the movie to be authentic, and he's like, sit with the d actual DJ and have him pitch you some lines about what he would say. So here are some of the lines. Okay, here we go. So, All right. Do you guys want this girl in the shower? Make that bounce. She's working it all up in front of your face. Damn. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Get a lap dance and get that coochie grinding up on you. Make some noise. Let me hear you. Get your hands off your nuts and clap, mother. Skeet, skeet, skeet. How do you pitch skeet, skeet, skeet to Stan Lee? We didn't. We did. We chickened out. <laughs> Back 
Let's get out, man. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Greg Grunberg. You sat down with Jim Lee. I did, man. He's now co-publisher over at DC Comics. Right. So DC has been doing this company-wide line reboot called Rebirth. So everything's going back to number one, and they're kind of rebuilding the universe. What's he working on now? He's working on Suicide Squad. And so we sat down with Jim Lee, and he kind of gave us an insight into what Rebirth was all about. So you guys went into Rebirth a couple months ago. Yes. Explain Rebirth to yeah. those that don't okay. read the right. books. This is the best chance to sell sure. to a bunch of cats who are like, oh, I love the movies and I watch the shows. Do they make comics? We did something called the New 52, what, like five or six years ago, and that was a reboot of the line. And over that period of time, what we heard from the fans was, look, we like the energy of the new stuff, but we, we, there's something missing. There's some of the stuff that you guys kind of overwrote was core, essential to the DC universe. We would love to see that back. So we wanted to bring those elements back. And then what we rolled out starting in June really is new number ones that anyone could pick up. And it really focuses on, on the elements that make these characters unique and special. So uh, if it's Batman, it's, it's a story that focuses just on Batman and Gotham City. You don't ha have to have read you know decades worth of continuity to understand it. Right. Uh, but it feels distinctly of Batman. Now, you guys are relaunching Suicide Squad. In Rebirth as well? Yeah. What yeah. does the team look like? Does right. it look closer to the movie team? It, it, uh, it's to the extent that, hey, these are the popular characters. Why not create a book that has... You can put them right on a cover of number one and be like, here it is. Yeah, exactly. The movie. exactly. So uh, Rob Williams, a uh, very talented UK writer, is writing the book, and I'm actually drawing it. And the way, it's a twice-monthly book, and so what we've done with... Twice-monthly? Yeah, it comes out two times a month. But once you run the place, yeah. aren't you supposed to kick back right. and tell others to draw? So I, look, I love drawing. It's why I chose to not do all the stuff my parents wanted to do and said, this is the life for me. That's what I was working on late last night. It's just a page of Suicide Squad in progress. Croc. Killer Croc, Deadshot, Harley. Oh, there. So this is um, kind of how I started. It all starts with this kind of line work, very rough like that. And then I kind of lightly erase it, start drawing figures, because that's the most important thing. I have the backgrounds kind of tweaked in, but I actually do those at the end. A page like this. Now, when early in one's career, I imagine you let pages go. At this point, do you just keep everything? Not go. Uh, couldn't sell them. <laughs> no, really? Was there, no, was there was a time I, people I, didn't I, want to buy I, it. I have stacks of artwork from the early days where uh, you couldn't sell them. But now, at this point, I have uh, some stuff that I'm passing on to my kids. So I've got uh, X-Men number one covers. You cry. Oh, I go, yeah, I got those still. So I still These have kids a, will never have to no, you know they're gonna get it and go like, eh. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, much. yeah exactly. <laughs> they're gonna eBay it like that first day. That desk, it is if not the first, one of the very first drawing uh, boards I ever bought. Years and years of drawing on top of this. Oh my God, but look, at it's got it's war stories. Like the whole, you take the page off, and there are stories being told on the blank table. So this has been with me a long, long time. Yeah, this goes back to the, the big end days. Mid-90s, mid-90s. Mid and now I have a big wooden table at home, because it looks better. <laughs> Jim Lee, one of my favorite people in the world. If there's a Mount Rushmore of combo creators, he's definitely one of the faces on it. That desk, that office, how cool is that? It'd be amazing to be an artist. Like, if I could draw, I wouldn't have inflicted all those terrible movies on people. <laughs> but I couldn't draw, so I made movies instead. <laughs> right. Like, the, being able to create a universe just with a pencil tip, you know, there's nothingness, yeah. and then you start, and after an hour, the world shows up on the page. That Suicide Squad page was magnificent. Yeah. Even Pencil Film, he kept handing it to me, and I was like, dude, I got the greasiest fingers in the world. I eat chicken, I masturbate, don't hand me this page. <laughs> and then I was holding it. <laughs> That's awesome. Count it up. We did uh, Blood for No Country for Old Men. Yeah. With a really like gut wrenching scene, and everybody in the movie theater was going like, ooh. ooh. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my god, so much butterscotch. <laughs> to geeking out you know we talk to a lot of people but a lot of people won't talk to us because look at us for heaven's sake seriously we're threatening yeah. and non-threatening at the same time it's very confusing for people so we had to find ourselves a field correspondent go out in the world talk to the people who won't talk to us and we found us one of the best if not the best ladies and gentlemen give it up for the only smith on this show that matters <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany smith. Yeah, Tiffany! Yay! You host DC All Access, Yes, right? so I host DC All Access now, and this is one of my favorite nerd stories. So I went and I interviewed with them. They sent a team to the comic book shop that I go to to make sure that I actually went there and shopped and bought comics. They vetted you that oh, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, they did, which I'm like, do it, because I do go there every week. I feel like if you go to a regular comic shop, you're like, it's your bar. You talk to the guy there, you know everything about what their life has going on, what books they're reading. When you were a kid, what character did you gravitate towards? Actually, for me, the first one I really gravitated towards in comics was Storm. I loved X-Men. I think growing up, you know, you read about mutants, every kid feels like they're a little bit different. There's something a little bit off about them. And Storm was one of the first characters that I saw that kind of looked like me. So as the field correspondent for Geeking Out, what was the latest adventure that you went on? Uh, I went to Dapper Cadaver. That sounds fun. Dude, yeah. I had like this weird balancing act of like, this is so horrifying, I'm terrified, to holy crap, these guys are so talented. 
Ever wonder where some of your favorite shows get their creepy, gory bodies from Preacher to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to American Horror Story? Well, we are here at Dapper Cadaver, one of the creepiest and coolest places in Hollywood. How are you doing? Oh, I was shaking. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. We've been doing this for 10 years. Name a show where somebody has died. Probably every single show we on TV. We probably work with them. Gotham, Scandal, uh, we did stuff for Game of Thrones. Um, we usually work on the scenes where there's a lot of bodies. Okay. Or Days of Future Past, the opening sequence where it's like post-apocalyptic. Yeah. We did over 100 skeletons. We did a bunch of stunt dummies. We did some gore pieces. There's all kinds wow. of stuff. Involved. And for Deadpool, uh, the most random of all, uh, we did a couple of chickens. I don't know what you did to the chickens. This is our pink studio, okay. and we can tint it a variety of different colors. And this is kind of the basis of whatever we're doing burns or gore, uh, where we build up Separate. this really, yeah, this really nice textured yeah. rubber. So yeah, that's that's going to be a nice meaty layer. So gross and awesome. <laughs> I feel like it's one of those jobs where you want someone to be like, ew, that's horrible. Oh, yeah. That means you did your job right. Absolutely. But at the same time, you want to be like, great job. Thank like you. it looks really good. Usually you see a severed hand or you see, you know, a decapitation or something. Does anything scare you anymore? Anything that's being done with creatures, with rubber, with stage blood, and none of that faces me. We did uh, blood for No Country for Old Men. Yeah. But they got tons of our butterscotch flavored blood. Yeah. And Josh Rowland has just gotten into the shootout and he's going back to the hotel room and he's in the hotel bathroom and he's just covered with blood and he's scrubbing and he's trying to get it off and it's a really like gut-wrenching scene and everybody in the movie theater was going like, Ooh! Yeah. and I was just like, oh my God, so much butterscotch. <laughs> Josh Berlin looks delicious right now. <laughs> so much detail. I, I'm not going to lie, every time I get this close to them and I turn around, I kind of creep me out. <laughs> this is Skin's Lutra. She's actually, she's rigged up so that you can hang her. It's so perfect. Thank you, we love, we love Lutra. She is great. Now you can see the blood oozing out of the side of her head. Yes. <laughs> Has anybody come in that you geeked out over? When, uh, when Jurassic World came over yeah. here to get dinosaur bones, to be working on it as an adult, I was like, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for letting me hang out. I'm just going to take this heart with me. Oh, wow. Wow, man. Who knew that yep. a place like that literally exists? I mean, I guess it makes sense. you got prop houses. You would have dead body prop houses. I left there with some pretty awesome nightmares to live with, so I wanted to bring a little friend for you guys so you could have nightmares as well. What'd you bring? What'd you bring? Um, Look at this. Oh, isn't he nice? Yeah. yeah. Look at this. It's metal. Mim and a mim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, don't. If we break it, it'll cost an arm and a leg. I'll tell you the creepiest. But <laughs> 